I'm finally back with another episode of uh, my reaction to the new Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. I'm still on season one. I knew that they just released uh, season two, but um, I've had a lot going on lately. I haven't had a chance to do these. Although I appreciate all the comments in the previous ones. I mean, they really uh, got me thinking. You guys have got a lot of great theories and uh, some are great, others uh, not so much that I don't really believe in it, but uh, the whole thing is it gets, it gets you thinking and sometimes I think that is what is needed to solve these types of crimes, these mysteries, is a think tank and everybody throwing out ideas. Um, my career, you know, in investigating uh, cold cases, a lot of times it's done alone and you don't have anybody to throw ideas off of. I investigated one murder uh, for the Lycoming County uh, District Attorney's Office for almost 10 years and I really never had anybody. I never had a partner for sure, but I never had anybody to throw those ideas off of and I think it would have been beneficial if I had somebody to do that with. Um, so anyhow, uh, my name's Ken Maines. If you don't know me, uh, you can check out the History Channel's Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, a five-episode series that uh, I starred in in 2017. Um, I also, beyond that, I mean, I've been in law enforcement for 15 years, recently retired, uh, cold case detective for a number of those years, also worked uh undercover with the FBI for their Safe Streets Task Force along with the uh, the Lycoming County uh, Drug Task Force. I ran that for a while too. Regardless, I have a lot of experience law enforcement, investigated a lot of cases and missing persons, unsolved mysteries, that stuff is just uh, my forte. It's, I, it's something I love. Uh, so uh, this was suggested to me to, to react to these Unsolved Mystery episodes, and I thought it was such a great idea because as a kid I always used to watch these and mysteries still intrigue me to this day. I'm 46 years old and I still, when I watch an episode, I am just so intrigued by it and want to learn so much more. There's nothing better than to watch an episode of Unsolved Mysteries or any documentary and you, as soon as it ends, you run to the computer and start finding out more stuff. And that always happens to me. So I like doing these reaction videos, but I also, it's not just to react, it's to educate and it's to give opinions as to, you know, like th what, what I know, you know, or what the uh, investigators, you know, a lot of people be like, well, why the investigator do that? Why didn't they do this? And a lot of times I can answer that for you. And transparency is big for me on cases. I've gotten to plenty of arguments with uh, other police departments and police officers about transparency, especially when it comes to cold cases. I continually believe that you have to put out as much information as you can and not keep it and not tell the family, especially. I understand that you got to keep things close to the vest sometimes. You can hold one or two things out. I get that and I know why you do that. But I think it's important to let the family know as much information as you can because by giving them that information, it might trigger something in them to give you back as a detective another lead. So that's always important. So let's get to this episode, The uh, Missing Witness, Lena. And this was a different one, a lot different than uh, the first one I did, you know, Ray uh, Rivera. You know, or even Alonzo Brooks, a lot different. This is this isn't a uh, a who done it. This is pretty straightforward to me. Uh, Lena's mom is responsible not only for uh, the stepdad Gary's murder, uh, but also with the disappearance of her own daughter Lena. And there's always something that sticks out to me in these different episodes. You know, I remember I think it was an Alonzo Brooks episode. It was the uh, brother. You know, the emotion and everything from him that stuck out to me. But in this one, I, all I kept thinking of was those poor girls, those six kids having to move, you know, in from home to a different state, 
to a different guy that the mom would shack up with for however long. And they that just grows you tighter. And I guarantee those six sisters were tight. And uh, that's all you have to, you don't ever get a chance to develop friends. As soon as you develop friends, you're moving again. So I felt for, for the daughters. And uh, that's what stuck out to me. But uh, so everybody that's watching this, I'm assuming has already watched the episode. So I don't want to rehash everything. And also I want to point out, I'm not investigating this. You know, I get a lot of comments on there that, you know, if, well, if you looked into this, you would see, well, I'm not looking into that. This is a reaction. This is, hey, I just watched it 15 minutes ago. I come here, I sit down, and I tell you off the top of my head what I think. So please don't leave in the comments, you know, well, you didn't investigate it. No shit. I know I didn't. I'm not, I'm not saying I am investigating it. I know how TV works. I've been on TV. I understand they don't put everything on there. You know, you're only hearing one side of the story. You know, we heard nothing, obviously, from the mother or her boyfriend, who she later married, Chris Clem. Uh, I'm sure they got a side of the story, too. We didn't hear that. So I understand you have to get the entire story before you can formulate an opinion and regurgitate that to a million people. So, I understand that. I have not investigated this case. This is just a reaction from that Unsolved Mysteries episode. Okay? Let's get that out of the way. So, with that being said, this is not a whodunit. It's clearly the mother that has killed both Gary and got rid of the witness, Lena, who I guess she was the only... They all know. It seems like all six sisters uh, know because they would they would talk. I mean, obviously, you're going to talk about you know something that shocking uh, within each other, close especially how close they were. But I think Lena was the only eyewitness. She looked through under the door or or something, and she saw her mom cleaning up with bleach. Um, she, so she was the actual only eyewitness. Everything else is hearsay after that. So the mom getting rid of the key eyewitness, sure. What precipitated that? That is what we don't know. Was it an argument between Lena and the mom? Was it a premeditated act? You know, the mom saying, hey, we need to quiet her before this lawsuit hits. And I don't know whether she knew about the lawsuit already or not. It seemed like it was a big gap from when Lena went missing, which was in February, I think it was Valentine's Day, until the lawsuit, which was many months later, I believe. But maybe there was rumblings of this lawsuit taking place. Or maybe it was simply Lena going to visit and they having a altercation about the son, Lena's son, who apparently the mother wanted. Uh, and with Lena, you know, what we learned through victimology, and by victimology, you know, I'll explain victimology, which I think always is huge, is learning everything you know about the victim. In this case, with Lena, through victimology, uh, you learn that she was quite outspoken that she would say what was on her mind. So it's not hard for me to envision an altercation of some sort between Lena and the mom when maybe something about the son. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with the disappearance of Gary. And the mom just took care of the problem like she had done previously. Or maybe it had everything to do with Lena saying, you know what? You're not touching my son. You're not having custody of my son. My son's staying away from you. And I know what you did. I've already, you know, told Gary's brother. So now I'm not going to retract this again. I'm going to go to the police. And that was enough to trigger what had happened. But let's make no mistake, okay? I don't believe that Lena ran away. You learn that through victimology. Would she leave her son? 
Um, and by all accounts, the people that know her best are going to say no. And she didn't take any belongings either. So by that, you know, okay, she did not run away. Because that is a possibility if you think about it. She knows a lawsuit's coming. She's the only witness. She doesn't want anything to do with this. It is possible, not probable, that she would leave, disappear. But she would take her kid, right? You don't you wouldn't disappear and not take your kid or your belongings. So now you go from uh it's it's possible to is it probable? No. No, she she more than likely was murdered, and we know who did that. Um, some of the things that I've written down here, you know, when I watch these episodes, something that sticks out to me, I just write it down. I do that with all my cases. You know, you get a, a thousand pages of a case report. I read through it one time like a story, and I just let it all sink in. And then the second time I go through, I read, and something sticks out to me. I'm like, mm, you write that down. That's a red flag. It's making... It's given a, a physiology, uh, that's a wrong word. Uh, it's given you a physical response. You know, when you read it in your gut that it doesn't feel right. Something ain't right about what you just read in that report. Is There's a reason for that. So you write that down. And then after you go through the 1,000 pages, you go back to the things that made you feel different when you read them. And that's where you start your investigation. Those are the things that you have to go and track down. Uh, but I digress. Things that I wrote down on here, uh, exclamation point was poor girls. You know, I, I, I said that before. I feel bad for these girls having to move and having to deal with that mom like that. Um, the shotgun malfunction, okay? She tried to kill him once before and the shotgun didn't go off. Again, two sides of every story. We're not hearing her side of the story, but I think it's it seems pretty... Uh, cut and dry to me that she tried to kill him before with that shotgun and it didn't go off. So you take that into consideration. Um, the boyfriend, Chris Klump, moving in two days afterwards. Okay, huge red flag right there. Obviously, if you didn't know she was having an affair, you as an investigator, you know now. Somebody moves in two days after the previous uh, husband goes missing. You can assume that that guy and that girl were having an affair prior to the disappearance. And that's where I would have started my investigation. And it looks like that's where they did. Um, I want to know more about this clamp. You heard a lot about the girl, the mom. But how about this dude? I would want to check his criminal history, his victimology. Uh, they're divorced at the end of the episode, it said. So I would pounce on that. You know, use that. You always want to do that. Uh, time in cold cases, sometimes they're beneficial. Relationships change, okay? Best friends that were best friends 14 years ago have gone their separate ways. And as you as a cold case investigator, take advantage of that. You go and you interview them and, you know, those loyalties are no longer there. So you use that as your advantage. And I would do that in this case to this uh, clump. But I would want to know more about this guy. I don't know enough about him. Um, the behavioral change in Lena, okay? As an investigator, if you did not know that she witnessed some of this stuff, all you would have to do when you would interview her friends and her family, when they said she didn't do drugs, she didn't drink, she'd go to parties, didn't do it, and then there was a behavioral change, at some point, and she started to drink, she started to do drugs. That is key in any unsolved homicide, okay? That happens a lot. When a homicide, a homicide occurs, okay? You have no idea of what, who did it. You're interviewing people, and you find out, hey, the neighbor from the down the block, uh, they moved a month after a homicide. Boom want to talk to him. Why did he move? Is there a legitimate excuse? Because a lot of times people want to get away from the area. Not all the time. I'm not saying that. But sometimes that's how it works. Uh, behavioral change. All of a sudden, somebody just starts drinking. The, You know what, uh, officer? The uh, the victim's boyfriend, he, 
he was never late to work. And all of a sudden, after these murders, uh, he showed up late. Uh, he start, He didn't smoke before. And he started going outside for smoke breaks, and he seemed to smoke a lot. And he would go to the bar afterwards. That is key. That's a behavioral change. That's something you want to hone in on. Could it be that the guy's just grieving? Sure, it could be. But it's something you have to check out. And I always say this, it's a lead. And as a detective, that's all you want is to have another lead. So I had that down. GPR, okay, ground penetrating radar. I've used them in my cases, missing person cases. Uh, and I wrote this down before they brought it out uh, in the episode where they were using it because I thought it'd be beneficial where the lady said, the sister said there was a well and now it's filled in. Okay, ground penetrating radar will find that disturbance in the soil. Uh, so what, what a ground penetrating radar does is basically it sends signals down into the earth and if it's a solid earth structure, everything's fine. Then all of a sudden, if you hit a void where there's a disturbance, you'll see that pattern change and that's where you want to dig. Uh, so I've used them where uh, a person had taken me and confessed that they had buried this girl at this location. You just can't go in and just start digging there. So, you know, you bring in the cadaver dogs. Okay, wow, they alerted there too. So now we're two of two. Third thing, let's bring in the ground penetrating radar. Oh, there's a disturbance in the soil right here, right where the cadaver dogs hit, right where the guy confessed and showed me that she's buried. So now let's dig. So you want to take all those steps as a precautionary measure before you just go in there and just start digging. So I let, let's let me throw this out at you though. Yes, the well thing kind of disturbs me, but you would want to check with the new owners of that property. Maybe they filled that in because they didn't need it anymore. Because if something works for an offender, more than likely they're going to stick to that method. What do I mean by that? How did they dispose of Gary? They burned him up and then they put them in different buckets with the ashes and spread them all over. Do you not think that they would do the same thing with Lena? Okay? It worked the first time. And the body was never found. So why change that method of disposal? You wouldn't. So... Now, let me tell you when, when that would change. It would change if you didn't have access to a property where you could burn outside like that. But if you're still in the country and still have country uh, access, you're going to do the same thing. There's no reason to change. When Ted Bundy killed his victims, he took them to the same spot, okay, in, in the mountain and disposed of them there. Why? He felt comfortable taking them there because his first couple of victims were never found. Now, of course, Bundy went back and, you know, had intercourse with the bodies and took the severed heads and did things like that. But why did, did he do that there? Because he was comfortable and it worked for him. So the same thing, whether you're Ted Bundy or you're a person that's only killed once, if it works for you, you're going to stick with it. So I believe... Uh, again, I didn't investigate this. So I'm just going off of this and my experience is that Lena probably suffered the same fate as Gary and the same method of disposal. So that's what I would be looking for. Um, again, this is not a whodunit. This is a pretty straightforward episode. The only thing that we'd want to know, I guess, the mystery is, where's Lena? But you say the same thing for Gary. Where is Gary? Um, I find it hard to believe that I understand the body is burned. But bones are bones. And some bones are not going to burn. They're, they're not going to disintegrate. And you're going to find them somewhere. Uh, so I, would, I guess I would want to know more about the disposal method. They showed in the episode her pulling her hands in there and throwing it out the windows or driving down the truck. Uh, I'd want to know if that's accurate or if they took a bucket and they dumped it somewhere. Well, if they did that 50 times, 
could that child take me back to one area for sure where she dumped that because that is where you would start your investigative uh, dig and come up with fragments of bones. Um, so I, I guess that's it on, on this episode. I'm going to try to do a couple more episodes maybe uh, this week. I've been off and I, I moved to a new house, new location. And, you know, I, I, things are, are different. Look for me. I did a, a thing for the Discovery Channel a couple months ago. Filmed for them. I will be on a bunch of episodes for a show for them. I think the working title was uh, Crimes and Conspiracies Decoded. But working titles can change all the time. But keep an eye out for that. And uh, I like doing these. And I'm going to continue to do them. I look forward to season two. So keep commenting. You know, all the people that, you know want to uh, talk shit all the time like they know everything and are not respectful I just delete their comments for the most part some of them I leave on there if they make a valid point uh, but some people it's crazy how they just hate to hate they got nothing better to do in life so uh, leave leave the comments you know I look through them especially the ones like Ray Rivera that episode one a lot of comments on there and a lot of different theories. And the theory about him getting hit by the car, being propelled, uh, projected out that far, you know, I, I like that. I like that. Um, but keep them coming. Anyhow, uh, my mind's spinning on this one now, and I'd love to help out those, uh, those, I guess they're not kids anymore, the daughters help find their sister. And uh, if they're watching this, if I can be of any help, you know, get a hold of me, uh, KenMains.com, or go to my Facebook page. You know, I got 20, 20 25,000 followers, I guess, now. And uh, let's just keep this rolling. And thanks uh, for all the support and all the great comments. You know, I always mention the bad comments because, you know, they're dickheads and I they irritate me. So then I... I'm stuck on that, but how about all the great comments and the great support? Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, if you, you got if you got mysteries that you want to look into, leave them into the comments section. I'll look at them. You know, I don't look at them every day, but I do look at them and I'll go through them. And uh, I heart some of them. So hey, another episode unsolved mysteries done. And I thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.